uh, disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. Versa- I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Jordan Davis, <sighs> Kayla Carter, Sly. They shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Kayla Carter, Sly? They shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style. I- wow. Good hump day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up those football gods. Good morning, guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, one thing I need to do is... Um, I am blessed, okay? Um, I believe if you want something, you have to go out and earn it. There's nobody that's going to go out there and just give you anything. I'm telling you, you, the only thing that will get you there is doing what you love and love what you're doing and you putting in the work. If you want to know how to be successful, that's it. You know, people always tell me, man, you should rest, man. And, you know, you're doing too much. No, no. Everything that I do right now today is something I don't have to do tomorrow, which means it frees me up to do something else tomorrow that will make me better. That's why at the end of the day. I do the fireside chat. I I go out there. It used to be before I was with you guys doing it. It would be my chance to reflect on the day to say, did I do everything I could to improve myself, to be a good person in the community, to be a good husband, to be a good father? Because you have to take care of the details. And see, that's what the Cowboys have done this year. You know, I, I, I don't know for sure for a fact that this is the reason, but I think it's probably a good thing that what Dak Prescott has done with his receivers. You know, sometimes things happen because of circumstances, because of COVID, where the Dallas Cowboys always have the spotlight on them. That everything you do is always micromanaged. You'll remember back when the COVID first happened and the Cowboy players were getting together and working out, you know, uh, and throwing the ball and stuff like that, right? And you had people that said, oh, the NFL, you know, they're not social distancing. You know, the NFL should come down hard. Dak said, you know what? I'm going to fix this shit. And he built a field in his backyard. Now, I, I know Pat Mahomes, he's done that now. Same thing, too. He's got a house that I would love to, Dak, if you'd like to invite me over. I can see the shirt that we gave you and things like that. You know, invite me over. Listen, I'll make sure I take my shoes off. I won't care no shit in your house, okay? I won't drink up your good liquor. You can just give me, like, the Jerry Jones 7-Eleven wine. That's fine. In fact, you know what? I won't eat or drink anything. Just invite me. I just want to see the place. Just let me see the place, okay? You know, I, I, you know maybe I can make a, a nice heirloom cradle for, 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 for your new daughter that's coming or something or a nice little piece you know we put the big star i'm sorry i digress i digress but dak prescott built that field in his backyard out of necessity and it has become you know i'm sure he's got the big playstation screens and everything else the swimming pool it's become the hangout for the players which has built even more camaraderie like he was saying When we all go out, if one guy's got his shirt untucked, we all got our shirt untucked. You become cohesive. And putting in that extra work that they did 
has seemingly made it seamless with CD and Brandon Cooks and the offense sticking together and working together. That's one of the things that, you know, maybe we don't give enough credence and credit to because the thing is with the NFL, and one of the problems I will say with the Eagles is because they're constantly bringing in so many different guys, getting free agents, you know, at late in training camp and beginning of the season and the middle of the season, there's not enough time to practice. For Shaq Leonard to go to the Eagles, there are no more padded practices. There is no full go in practice to say, we need that guy to be able to step up and do great things. He don't know what that, that everybody's name even yet. It's harder when you bring somebody else in. And that's why I say sometimes, Stephen Jones, as much as we don't want to give him credit, when you believe in your guys, you believe that they at least know what the play calls are. You know the philosophy. You know the other players around you. They know you. It helps. And that's one of those things that I think has truly helped the Cowboys offense and passing game. But what's also helped the Dallas Cowboys passing game is, here's the great thing about football. Now, I'm not going to be Dan Orlovsky can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Can take numbers and skew them any, any yeah. way we want. We They'll often can take numbers and we'll, we'll they fit will do them that. into the narrative that we want mm -hmm. to try and paint. We know they do. And that's real easy because to, you know, like my buddy Derek, you know, Derek, I've been pounding on you. I apologize. But, you know, you, you pissed me off, bro. You, I'm sorry you pissed me off about this. But when you sent me the, the, the text or the email before the Eagles game where you said that Dak Prescott's winning percentage against teams with 10 or more wins. Now, first of all, there's not that many teams that win 10 games in a season. We've had years where, you know, nine and seven was winning the NFC East and so So I, I get that, that window. Versus Dak Prescott's win percentage against non-10 win teams. Well, the fact is, Dak Prescott has won a lot of games. And you put out there, well, the you know, disparaging between the win percentage between going against 10 win teams versus um, teams that are lesser that, you know, that, that, that this is only Matthew Stafford and um, 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 Kirk Cousins were worse. Well, it's kind of cherry picking the numbers because, you know, you got to look at this overall, the amount of wins. and th OK, but be that as it may, you can cherry pick even the numbers that Dak Prescott has now. And you can find something that you can say that he's just not good. It's just the fact of it. That's the thing with statistics. But here is one where we're actually looking and comparing where we were last year to where we are now. And this is one of those ones that really and truly surprised the heck out of me. Because when we looked early on in the season and we looked at Tony Pollard running the football, Tony started out like gangbusters. Maybe he was nicked up and the running a game seemed to not get there. Of course, we had problems in the red zone. And you're looking at the running game. We all kept saying, boy, do we miss Zeke. Boy, do we miss Zeke. We need Zeke Elliott, right? Well, the thing that's kind of funny is, and people haven't been noticing it or talking about it, but we're actually getting back to the number ratio that we had last year. We talked about, you know, or Jerry Jones, you know, Tony Pollard needs to be the lead back and everything else. And we figured at early on, it seemed like it was Tony Pollard. You know, you're getting the $10 million, so you're going to be getting the lion's share of all the runs. And he was doing the majority of the running. And you could see that it wore him down and he wasn't as effective. We're talking about a guy who last year was getting like 5.1 yards a run. And his guy now is getting 3.8. Well, here's the thing that's kind of interesting now. What they've done, now he's up to 4.1. And you've seen him playing better and better over the last couple of weeks. The interesting part about this is, the real interesting part is, what they've done is they've used Rico Daddle more than they had before. The ratio last week was Tony Pollard had 16 carries. And Rico Daddle had 12. And what they're doing is we're kind of like where we were last year, just reverse where Zeke Elliott 
was the lead dog, you know, getting the 15, 16 carries. And then Tony Pollard was used more in the passing game and getting about the 10 to 12. But here's where it's kind of really crazy. If I told you that the Dallas Cowboys are one of the better teams at running the football, you would say, you're kidding me. Because right now, the Cowboys are averaging 4.1 yards a carry. And that's even after we had problems early in the season. We're the 11th best rushing football in the league, and we're seemingly getting better and better. And here's where it's kind of crazy, because last year, when we had Zeke here, we we're getting 118 yards a game now. Last year was Zeke. We were only getting 102. I know 16 yards doesn't seem like a lot, but when you think about we averaged last year 3.6 yards per run versus 4.1, a half a yard every time you run the football is huge. And that's the difference of what is happening with this Texas Coast offense. You know, Mike McCarthy said, I want to be able to run the ball. And we all laughed at that because I went back and I, I've, I have been one to say that Mike McCarthy is trying to replicate the team that he had in Green Bay when they won the Super Bowl. I look at it where they had tight end by committee because they had like three really good tight ends and they had like four great wide receivers, a couple guys that are veterans, that are older guys experienced, you know, and Greg Jennings and Donald Driver and stuff. And then they had younger guys like Jordy Nelson and things and uh, and so on. But they had a lot of receivers and different weapons to go to. They had a great defense that took away the football. Their running game was running by committee, basically. Their running back, lead running back, only had like 700 some yards. Aaron Rodgers was number two. And so you can look at the Green Bay Packers team that won the Super Bowl in Dallas and look at this team and you can see a lot of the same things. The interesting part of it was, I want to say that um, Aaron Rodgers only had 28 TD passes and 11 interceptions. So it wasn't all about just Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't where he was throwing 40 TD passes and, you know, four interceptions and having to do everything. It was a balanced machine, and that's where this team is right now. And Mike McCarthy saying, I want to be able to run the football. If you pick up 16 more yards a game, I mean, we're talking about a 15% increase in productivity in running the football. That's huge. That's huge. You know, if you get a 15% pay grade, Ray Ray's, you're happy as shit. You are happy as shit. And that literally is what we have been able to do. And because you're able to run the ball more effectively, instead of it being second and nine, it is second and five, second and four on some of these downs. You are in a better position to open up the book. You're not in desperation mode on second down trying to pass and getting a big chunk of yards. And the use of Rico Daddle is helping to make Tony Pollard more productive because he's not wearing down. And this is the problem that the Cowboys have had. By playoffs, the Cowboys have peaked. We've had injuries. We lose guys that are, or they're not as productive, and we haven't had as many weapons to go to. When you have CD and Tony Pollard as your two big guys, you lose Tony Pollard, and Zeke can't fill the deal, the, the deal with running the football and catching. You're hamstrung. And so this game plan right now is definitely working a lot better for the Cowboys. And this, of course, is broke ass media. And I see one of my cameras has moved because here at Broke Ass Media, we of course are the cameraman, the lighting, the sound guy, the talent, well, lack of talent, I should say, and everything, the research department, we do it all. So we wanna listen to this morning, getting up where they now say, I've never seen Dak playing so well. And they're still, kicking and screaming wise, still not wanting to believe it. Cowboys, we got Buffalo, we got Tampa Bay, we got the Lions, and we got the Commanders left on the schedule. That's a tough road to hope. Division game, Tampa Bay, excuse me, uh, Miami, 
of course, with Tariq Hill and gang and that offense and stuff on the road, Buffalo, looking at the weather forecast, the temperatures tipped up to about 48, and now it's saying possibly light rain. So we're getting closer in and we're narrowing it, but it doesn't look to be cold. We'll see how it goes. But let's check them out this morning and see what they had to say. That's the same record they had this time last year. But this time, Jerry Jones is more optimistic. What is your greatest Oops. reason for optimism that this year is going to be different? I really think that uh, uh, Dak playing uh, the way he's playing um, uh, in coordination with uh, what Mike's wanting uh, it to be on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, they have a little different perspective when they're calling the plays on offense if they're the coordinator as well. And it's more complimentary. And I think we're getting the benefit of that. All right, so I was asking Hawk about that in the meeting this morning, and you had a very interesting insight into mm. Jerry's not just talking here. In this case, he no. is exactly right. He's absolutely right because Mike McCarthy has come in and he's given detail to this offense. I love the fact in the offseason when he said, I'm going to be the play caller, he put it all on his shoulders. And by putting it on his shoulders, he relieved some of that pressure off of Dak, and you can see it in the game plan. The West Coast offense is so nuanced. It's so detailed. Mm. And this is different than last year. It's even different than it was at the beginning of this season because why? receivers, the tight end in Ferguson and Dak have to be seeing the same thing. And the level of detail and chemistry they built, you see it. Last year, Dak would be going into games and they would just have a bunch of options. And you could see that he had an option going into the play when it didn't um, materialize. He didn't know what to do, and he would force a lot of throws. Right. This year, he knows he has the answers to the test because the pressure is off his shoulders because by going through his progression, by knowing the details of what comes down the field, he's been better. He's actually playing less risk-averse, which is a best version of Dak. He's playing loose. When he was saying that this morning, you were nodding as, as yeah. vigorously as I've ever no, seen it's you. well said, right? Like last year was a concept-driven offense, right? They're going to go in and they're going to have certain things that Dak really loves. But when somebody takes it away, what do we go to, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Now it's all precision-driven on a West Coast offense. It's all timing. When is this guy going to be here? When is he going to cross? When is he going to be open? Ball's got to be on time. I think when, you, when you're watching the Cowboys, you're watching Dak Prescott, it couldn't have the schedule they had couldn't have come at a better time after the San Fran game because they got some defenses they could take advantage of and we were all like oh they're beating bad teams well there's that's some good time for that right because you're building confidence so when you do mm -hmm. you have one game you lose to the Eagles in a tight game then you come back in a few weeks you play them and you beat the brakes off of them so you're seeing this offense continue to evolve as, as Hawk is saying throughout the season you got to like where they are because the confidence is really what they have lacked in the past. Is it Speaking different this the time? the psychology of the team. Yes. Um, no, it feels different because to me, Dak is a new man. And not just on the field, but off, like, on camera. Like, just the way he talks to the media, he is 100% authentic. And we, you know, I feel like in the past, Dak would say the right thing. And now he's like, I don't really care what any of you think. Mm -hmm. And that's the part, I think, because he's confident in himself and this offense. Now, I will say... Give Mike McCarthy credit for adjusting because the offseason talk was about eliminating mistakes. We're going to be aggressive, but they started the season. Yeah, I know they put up 40, but it, it didn't feel like they were allowing Dak to win the game. It was mm -hmm. like, don't mess up. And I think there was a point in the season where it flipped and is like, you are the franchise guy. Now go lead us. And they've allowed him to do that. It's interesting to say that we're taking pressure off of Dak, but it does seem like they're asking him to do more. But it is about him feeling comfortable. And I think consistent in the story of the season is the story that, that Hawks started us off with. They're getting better. And yeah. that suggests yeah. that they're getting more comfortable mm -hmm. with each other and in this offense. If you remember back to some of the most um, painful interceptions that Dak threw last year, it was a couple inches off here or there. And the difference between the West Coast offense and what they were doing last year is they had a lot more like latitude to make decisions about breaks and cuts and right. what, what window to go to. Yeah. This is very different. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you need to be here, yeah. right there, at this mm -hmm. particular right time. now, and that ball's I think coming. One of his strengths is intelligence. Like he is one of the best players when it comes to getting to the line of scrimmage, pre-snap, understanding what you're going to see. Yes. And if you take that that pressure off of him, if he can figure out, all right. 
I see this, you see this. That means at this moment, I'm going to do that. It makes it a lot easier for yeah. them than trying let, let, to read through the play and say, all right, if this isn't open, then switch to here and find that. No, you 100%. know it's going to be open. If, think about this. Think about the, the issues that the Chiefs have had with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And the receivers not being on the same yeah. page at the same moment, right? Just a little bit, like the depth yeah. of route, where they're cro- and, and how, how uh, complicated it feels for the best in the world to do it. That is what has been eliminated mm-hmm. in Dallas. Everybody is seeing it the same way. Everybody is expected to be in the same place, the right place, mm-hmm. the right time, and that's how their offense is going. Does that add up to more success in the postseason, which is when this will really matter? Absolutely. And you're it seeing should. that trajectory that these guys are talking about. If you go back to that Cardinals game, Brandon Cooks and Dak Prescott specifically, because their connection, yeah, we talk about CeeDee Lamb, he's been amazing, Ferguson has come on, but Brandon Cooks has been the reason why defenses have to play them honest. Right. And in that game, there are quick game throws that Dak Prescott is double clutching. There are times he's expecting Brandon Cooks to sit down in zone and he's running through it, but so very clearly not having the detail that Neek is talking about. This offense goes down to the steps, and the reason why he feels so confident that even if you're not in that timing, he can get out of the pocket and know that those mm-hmm. routes are going to be in a certain place, and yep. he's still making those plays down Is the this field. the time? Is this finally the Listen, year? Listen, if it's not now, I honestly don't uh, know when. It all sounds good to the 49ers. There you go. That's exactly right. That, no, that's okay. the thing, because the question of, like, can they win the NFC East? Sure, but that schedule. Like, they, they have a golden opportunity to prove that everything we've like been seeing them. will continue. But again, uh, they still got to do it. I like and Dominique, them. oh. I like them. I okay, want to like sure them. You say, make sure you say that in the group chat, in the uh, family uh, group chat. Uh, sure. I, 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 we're honest around here. Like, yeah, they, they know <laughs> that is. I think they're better than everyone in the NFC. Except for except the Niners. Except for the yeah. Niners. They, they're going into that San Francisco Invitational that is the <laughs> NFC playoffs. Hey, ESPN Bet is the official sports book. There we go. Kicking and screaming, the talking heads, they're they're turning around and coming around to the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always,